Welcome back. Wow. It's another Tuesday. We, we took a little lunch break. Took a little lunch break. Back in the same clothes, but... Back in the same clothes. That's because we're just... But it's the same day. We said we'd be back. We want to give you this stuff right, like, hot. Hey, so staff. that means that we, we only have time for small breaks. Yeah, we only have time for small breaks. we got to get through all these questions. I think we only got through, like, five or six in the last episode. Yeah. Not Man. even half, but we're, we're going to get through. We might be gonna... more speedy this time. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We do do we think through. we're going to get to them all? No. We don't know. But if we don't, then If we don't, we what if we answer them. on our Instagram story one oh, day? Oh, that's true. That would be fun. We'll, we'll answer the rest of them that we Live. didn't do. Live with POV. Live? That would be wild. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Um, ooh, should we do scale of 1 to 10? Mm. Or should we just... How are we feeling after our lunch break? How are we feeling after our we lunch could. break? We yeah, could. We could. Let's do it. All right. Quick. Um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'd say an eight. I think I Ooh. jumped 0. 0.5. You jumped We 0. went to 5. Red Robins. Oh, yeah. That was a good lunch. <laughs> it was great. I... The strawberry lemonade? You, you love the strawberry lemonade. <laughs> so good. I had a Dr. Pepper, of course. Did you know that Red Robins used to do this thing on your birthday? Where they would give you a free burger, but they took it away. They took it away? They took it away. It's not a part of the rewards app anymore? No. It's, it's truly tragic. Why? Because they said, free, we hate you. We don't want to give you a burger on your birthday. That's foul. I know. Tragic. Anyways. That's rude. Haley's an 8. I would say <laughs> I'm a 7.5. The lemonade is getting to me. Mm. And um, it's hot. Still. It's still toasty. We we left. We turned the air on. Still toasty. It's just Nothing the warehouse. It's just it? it's so large. I think is the issue. And we ate really fast. So yeah, I mean we ran over here. So okay, okay. Questions. All right. Getting back into it. We're gonna skip question of the week because we got yeah. multiple questions. Questions. Um, I would like to start out with. A juicy one. Mm. So let me find the one I was looking at. Um, I think it's the one I was thinking. Maybe. No, I don't. I mm. don't know. Okay. Should you forgive a partner who has betrayed you, or is it better to move on? Ooh. Should you forgive a partner who has betrayed you, or is it better to move on? It depends. For I me. think it depends on what they did. How they betrayed you. Yeah. And how they're working to come back. I think also partner is very vague. If you're talking about a boyfriend, spouse, girlfriend, spouse, yeah. If you're talking about a spouse, it's different. Husband, Should you wife, forgive yeah. them? I mean, honestly, the Bible tells us yes, but there's some there's a lot of work that needs to be done in that marriage with betrayed trust. Yeah, it's like not going to be an overnight like an automatic fix. Thing. That could be months, years type yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think with boyfriend, girlfriend, like if, you're, if you've broken up, trust was betrayed, and one, a par one partner's coming back and being like, hey, like, please forgive me, like I want you back. I think the I person think that betrayed them needs to be pursuing them wholeheartedly and not for reasons of loneliness or feelings of wanting to be in a relationship, but truly because they see that. And I think the other person needs to have, I think they both need to have worked through their issues. Yeah. And I think it needs to be very clear why that trust was betrayed, how it was betrayed, how it's not okay. And like, why that's not going to happen again needs to be very, very clear. Yeah. And it, there, you can't be holding grudges if you go back into a relationship. That's true. With that person. That's true. What do you think? I agree. I think when it, um, if it's a marriage, man, that's tricky. Yeah. Because biblically, we're told to, to figure it out um i honestly think for me personally it depends on what it is yeah um if we're looking at worst case scenario sure like they cheated on me yeah i honestly would have to take a step back and really evaluate yeah 
Um, just because that's that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, and I don't know if that trust could ever be repaired. Yeah. Depending on how the relationship was beforehand and like how well you know this person. I don't know. That's that's tricky for me. If it's dating I think it I think honestly it just depends on what it is. What if they lied to you about um I don't even know what I'm like trying to think of something not cheating related because I feel like there's so many different ways of betraying trust that's not just No, that's cheating. true. Like if somebody were like if I was dating somebody and they lied about where they were, does that count? Yeah. It's like being sneaky. Yeah, if you're being sneaky. Yeah. I don't think I'm a good person to ask <laughs> because like I yeah. am like a I'm not usually a one and done type of person like if you if you betray me once then peace out but like i might give you another chance depending on what it is but i'm very much like you should be very I don't strict know. i, I think don't know even in dating like why would you want to go back to somebody who's betrayed that's what you? i'm saying like i don't think i'm a good person to ask yeah, about this because i am very much like no you're done yeah like you, you're doing this now, I think that this is just going to be a continued yeah, pattern a or good. this is just like leading into something that is not going to be good down the I road. I think if someone cheated um, cheated on me in a rela dating relationship, it would be the end. Like there would be no going back, I think. Yeah. If it was something less than cheating, like lying about feelings or lying about um friendships or whatever i think that there's like something there but i i'm remembering now your i think last q a there was something about white lies and like white lies oh, was yeah. a red flag for you so it's interesting it, it is a red flag lying yeah yeah i don't know i would really have to think about it depending on what it is because it, yeah it just depends i think it honestly depends i think we need more um, context. Yeah, I think we do. Depending on the situation when it comes to For that. Sure. All right, let's move on to the next. All question. right, all right, okay. That was what do you think, Haley? Good. Um. Okay, is it okay to date someone who, for example, isn't a Christian, or the same religious beliefs as you? Doesn't have the same religious. Beliefs. Yeah, does not have the same. I just don't know. Is it why okay to you date somebody? Like, just imagine, okay, I can see wanting to if you're not in it for marriage. If you're just dating someone to get to know them for fun, whatever, then, like, whatever, do your thing. But if you're dating for marriage and in that marriage you're thinking about having kids, why would you want to raise kids with somebody that you're going to have conflicting morals and beliefs on? Yeah. Are you just going to let the kids choose what religion to follow? Like, are you going to teach them both religions? Like, yeah, no, and that's, that, that's from a, ag oh, that's from like a non-Christian point of view. From a Christian point of view, I don't think you should be dating non-Christians. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it is very, it can get very tricky because I personally believe that in order to do life with someone you're gonna want somebody yeah. to uplift you and to hold you accountable yeah. and to you know do all these things and spiritually if they don't understand like your spiritual or religious beliefs and aren't the same like they aren't aligned then I hard. don't know if it would work out I don't think it would work out I mean honestly I have seen things where like like, here's a, here's a good question. Like, people who marry, and they're both atheists when they get married, and one of them becomes a Christian, like, mm. that's hard because you yeah, love no, this yeah. person. You've built a life with this person. Maybe you even had kids with this person. Yeah. But now you have this relationship with God, and your spouse doesn't. Yeah. Okay, that's a cool opportunity to, like, sh sh demonstrate a life that follows Christ, and maybe, like, your spouse becomes Christian. 
Um, I just think it would just create more problems down the road. Yeah. It's hard. And maybe it's just because I'm in the headspace of dating for marriage. Like, yeah. I am not in that's the... That's what I was saying at the let's, beginning. Let's just, you know, I like... Just, that seems like... Jump from person to person. So, like, if I find an interest in this person and want to date them, yeah. it's because I can see them... <laughs> yeah. Um, being a, uh, a, like, a good husband further down the line. Right. But, like, I, I just, yeah, I just don't think it could work. I know. And I, it does work, then I think it would only work for a little bit. And yeah, then I think it would just be hard. Yeah. It's I fair. just, yeah. I think it, yeah, I just don't, I don't think so. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but I just don't think so. Sad. Sad. Okay. Sad times. Next question. Did you just ask that one? I, I just asked one? that. I just okay. asked that. Um, I'm confused with this question. Is a man that is too friendly with another woman... Con okay. Is it considered cheating when an, your man is too friendly with other women? This is a pet peeve of mine. Is men who are just like, Hi. How are you today? Like, or just like overly friendly. Because they know what they're doing. They know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah. I don't think it's cheating no i don't think it's cheating i do think Sucks, that it's though. definitely yeah a red flag if somebody yeah. is way i think there's a difference from being friendly and being overly friendly That's and fair. especially as a guy or even women i feel like it happens to women too i think it could go both ways where if you're being too friendly it's being looked at as or being interpreted as flirty oh yeah that's just a hard line. Like, like when I think about our guy friends, granted they're married, so maybe it's different, but they're very friendly, and I never, like, it's not, it's definitely not. They are friendly, but I think they're, they're just, like, like, friendly as if I was dating somebody, or I had a husband who was going up to women and just, like, having a conversation, that's fine. Yeah. But if I see my husband or my boyfriend putting his hand on somebody's back or holding their hand or like running their hands through their hair, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. like just like, I think that's just way too much. Yeah. None of our guy, I personally don't have any guy friends that do no. that to me. I'll have guy friends that come and talk to me yeah. and like go out of their way to like be like, oh my gosh, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. But if there was like somebody that was putting their hands on me or was being like, hey, maybe we should like go out for drinks sometime or hey, maybe we should go out for dinner. Like just me and you. Like, like what I think about it, your friends? I think it depends on the person. It's yeah. like, because That's I fair. know that if somebody asked me out to like, if I had a fr like a guy friend asked me out to dinner or somebody that I knew, like for example, like Jessica and Greg, if Greg asked me out for dinner, just like me and him, I'd be like, that's fine because I also know Greg. I was a part of their. Yeah. Their, and you know Jessica. I know Jessica. I'm very good. Like I'm good friends with both of them. Like I I was a part of their um of yeah. the engagement. I was at their wedding. I've known them for years. So yeah. like I think it would be like Jean for example. If I went to dinner with Jean or lunch with Jean, I think it would be fine. Like it yeah. would be fine. But if somebody like if anybody like I feel like there's a line. There's definitely a line. There's a line. Okay, similar question that I think we also have on here, but I feel like these go hand in hand. Okay. What about a guy whose best friend is a mm. girl, but, like, they've never dated. It's always been platonic. They say there's nothing there. You're thinking about dating this guy. Is that a red flag? Is that normal? I don't think it's a red flag straight off the bat. Okay. I th personally, for me, if I were going to, if I was interested in somebody that had a friend that was a girl, like a best friend that was a girl and hung out all the time, I think I would be cautious, sure. but I think I would try not to jump the gun okay. from, from the start. Yeah, that's fair. If there's things that I'm like, mm, yeah. this is looking a little shush, a little shush, a little too much for well, me, then I think I would, 
I would be like, let's evaluate, let's talk Fair. about it. Fair. And then if I'm like, mm, still not good, yeah, dip. But have you ever seen Maid of Honor? Yes. It, okay, that's what is making me think of. Well, it is. It is one of the. I, I have heard, and like I don't know how true this is because I'm not a man. Sure. Um, but I have heard that men, which I could be wrong, which I'm not a man, like I said. So men, whoever please, listened to this, yeah, good, please let us know. know. I'm not a man. Um, men are only friends with women that they find yeah. attractive. <laughs> I that's gross to me so which I'm which also it's like because I'm friends with well I'm gonna I'm gonna stop my sentence yeah there. just stop it <laughs> that's why I said I don't know if it's true because I'm not a guy and I'll probably all the men that are listening are like laughing right now being like you idiot but I, I feel like if it's true it would be a subconscious truth. Like, it wouldn't be, like, them going out of their way to only be friends with people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they would be like, no, you're wrong. But yeah. But then, okay, men, evaluate. Do you think all the women, like, is there a woman that you're not, that you're friends with, that you don't find some sort of But then I guess that goes to? both ways because I guess if you look at really? it from my point, I'm friends with guys that, like, I don't find, like, exactly. I don't like, like, that. But... But we're friends with guys that we don't find necessarily attractive. So it's di we're saying it's different because we're saying that guys yeah, aren't I friends. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what the truth is. Guys need to comment or yeah. text uh, DM us. I wonder if guys have the same question if it was, I'm going to date, I, I'm interested in this girl, but her best friend is a guy. What yeah. do I do? Yeah. Um, I think you need to ask her straight up. I don't know if any guys ask this question, but or thinking about this, but that's a good that's a good one to think about. Yeah, I think it just needs to be asked, like, hey, have there ever been, are there, is there a possibility of feelings involved? And honestly, I feel like more often than not, if there's a person that is dating somebody, and they have like an opposite gender best friend, the it's more likely for the best friend, I feel like, to like the person you're interested in versus like the person you're interested in to like their best friend because mm -hmm. I feel like if they like their best friend unless like that person has shut shot them down or something or like neglect uh ne rejected rejected them like what's that word then why would they be pursuing you you know so good juicy that is juicy, juicy I don't stuff. think that was on there but that was a good one um hmm my turn. Um, okay. This one says, I just got out of a relationship. How long should I be single for? I'm assuming that means before they dive into... So I asked this question. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But honestly, I've been thinking juicy. about Juicy. We told you juicy questions, guys. We, we promised you. Actually, all these questions I, I asked. <laughs> so I'm just really curious. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's lying. Um, I have a theory. Okay. Because the longer that I get away from the yes. breakup date, yes, the easier it gets. Yeah. So my theory is double the, uh, the unless you were dating for like eight years, then like that's tragic. I'm so sorry. I don't I don't know how to help you. Um, but <laughs> if <laughs> that doesn't fit in with Bree's analogy here. So, uh, uh, here, here's my analogy. If you were dating less than a year, mm -hmm. so months, double the amount of months it took for you to be apart or for to date, that's how much time. So if you dated five months, give it 10 months. If you dated like six months, give it a year. I think if it's over, if you've been dating for over a year, give it a year. Mm -hmm. At, at the very, very least. If you need more time, maybe try the double it rule. Don't beat yourself up. Unless you've been dating for eight years, then don't take 16 years off. That yeah, that's would not a lot be good. of years. But I think a, a significant amount of time is needed to fully move on. Oh, what do you think? I... 
I don't know. I think it just depends on... I don't think you should even start looking yeah. for somebody until no. you are over your ex. Yeah. That's just rule number one. Because that's disrespectful to the people that you're... The new people you're meeting. Now, granted, do I know people and have I heard stories of people who have gotten out of a relationship and weren't fully over their ex and, like, somebody stumbled, up, like... And then, like, they started dating? Sure. Okay. I have. Do I think that's the exception? Yeah. I think if, if whoever God wants to place in your life at a specific time is going to happen. If you, hypothetically, date somebody for, like, like a year. Yeah. You break up, and, like, two, three months after the breakup, somebody stumbles upon, somebody lands in front of you. Okay? And it ends up working out and you date. I think as long as the issue, like if you're able to be in a relationship with somebody and not constantly think about your ex and you're in a good place, yeah. then I say go for it. Yeah, okay. But do I think that you should come out of a breakup and look for somebody to date the week after? No. no. Because I think that's only gonna end up hurting you in the long run. Yeah. I think you need to give yourself time to heal. Yeah. And only you will know when you're ready. Yeah. Don't let other people push you or rush you. Yeah. It's okay to say no. Like, I feel like people are, people will often be like, Brie, like, go on a date with someone or Brie, like, let's set you up. But I'm just like, I'm just like not ready. And I'm it's also okay, okay. Being okay yeah with that. of just being like I'm actually in a good spot right yeah. now I like I don't need to date like I would be fine like I think I'm at a spot and I think I've said this and I think I might have said this in the last episode but I would be okay with having a boyfriend right now and I and I'm also okay with not yeah. having a boyfriend right now yeah I think that is a spot That's where a you should be, be in yeah you should I don't think you desperate. should be like crying and being like I just want to be in a relationship you, you, honey, because then maybe honey, you're not in it for the right Eat some reasons. chocolate ice cream, watch the notebook, and talk to your friends because that is just not a good headspace to be in. Because Preach it. that's not good. You need to be okay with yourself. You just need to take your time, and it's different for everybody. Some people can be popped back yeah. in like three, four months. Yeah. Some people it takes a little bit longer depending on how the relationship ended, how long you were together. If you love this person, like, there's a lot of things, but don't rush it. Yeah. I think you will only know when you are ready, and you'll find, and you'll know real quick if you're not. So, I think it just depends. Yeah. If, if something's meant to happen a lot sooner than you think, then, then it happens. that's just God's, that's God's timing. Plan. But don't, don't rush into anything just to fill a void or to make yourself feel better, because ultimately... It's most likely going to backfire. I really hate the saying that the best way to get over a breakup is... Another. Keep, is, is another, another one? Is another one. I hate that. I think it's just a recipe for disaster. Yeah, on both parties. Yeah. So. You're going to end up not only hurting yourself, but also hurting someone else. Yep. That's the tea. That's the flippin' tea. All right. What was the even question? I just got out of a relationship. How long should I be single oh. for? Okay, so it's my turn to ask a question. You see. Okay, I'm in love with my best friend's ex-boyfriend. What should I do? Juicy. Uh, I don't know who is asking this. <laughs> what? I'm in love with my best friend's ex-boyfriend. What should I do? You don't date them. Bro. First of all, you get I over think, it. Bro. Unless. I don't know. Unless it's been a long amount of time. They are legitimately over it. Like, le like you know how you can, like, people will say, like, oh, yeah, I'm over it. But, like, you know, they're not actually over it. Okay, not like that kind of over it. It's been time. They're over it. It didn't end badly. Then, like, maybe? I think there needs Ugh. to be a conversation that takes place. Early on. And not, like, before you guys start talking. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The soon, the, like, once you start developing these feelings, you need to talk to your friend. Yeah. Especially if it's your S best friend. Yeah. Second, going into that, if you are willing to have this conversation with your friend and want to, like, pursue this, 
then you need to also be open to the idea that this person may not want to be friends with you and take a step back. Yeah, which is absolutely fair. So I, I'll, yeah, but I do think it depends on the amount of time. Yeah, I would agree. I think it would just be, I think, I think it's a I little just, like, weird regardless. I just, like, dating any of your exes. Because, Thank like, you. yeah, <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> Praise God. Um, yeah, I just like it would be too hurtful to. I can't imagine going up to you and being like, "Hey, I like blah blah blah." <laughs> what do, do you have anything to say? I would <laughs> probably walk away. Yeah, exactly. Like if you like if my I'm trying to think. Which I don't I don't know if that's bad on me. No, but I think I would fair. walk away out of just like it's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot to process. I have, what do I, I don't think I, I don't think I have a personal experience to this, but if. Who is asking this question? I need to talk this to this is, person. Maybe, yeah. I feel like I don't, we don't, maybe you need someone a better, a pay scale above us to ask this question. Um, also, if it's your best friend, I guess it really depends on the reason they broke up, but if you're best friends with per this person. You should like, maybe it's also not going to work out for you. Because I feel like you're friends with people you're know. similar with in some way. I think it... Uh, I don't know. Bro, I don't know. That's a hard question. I think question. even if... Even if I was totally over my ex and... I think even if it was just a friend. Yeah. I would still feel... I would still feel I would, like... I wouldn't feel like the feelings of like I still like this person I can't believe you're betraying me like this I think it would just be like this is really awkward yeah because I look at you as a friend right. or a best friend and I have or like I like I think what just goes through my mind is like I just I kissed that dude yeah and you're kissing that dude we're kissing the same dude we're kissing the same dude months years apart weeks apart that's a lot that's a lot to process yeah I couldn't couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. It would just be a little, it would be weird. I don't know, but I do think, whoever this is, I'll pray for you. Um, I think there needs to be a conversation with your friend. As early as possible. I'll just reiterate exactly what I said. And I think you need to be, if you are willing to be in a relationship with this guy, then you need to be open to the idea, the fact that you're best, like, you're, it, you're basically picking sides. Yeah. Like, you, you either pick your best friend or you pick this guy. Because unless some miracle that God works in your life where somebody is still willing to be your friend. Yeah. But I think it, I, I, don't, I don't even know I think how. you can feel it out. I think by having the conversation as early as feelings start, be like, hey, like, this is weird, but, like, I'm starting to have feelings for your ex. And... That is so weird. Uh, but I think you need to be very. Also, I hope aware. that you that uh, that your best friend knows that something's going on before the jump. Oh yeah, if you yeah. if you're hiding this from like if you were like I've been talking to him for a couple of yeah. months now. We've actually gone on a couple of dates, and I think I'm starting to develop feelings. I would lose my ish. Oh yeah, I would. I'd be like, for okay, now I don't trust you. Yeah. So. So bye. So, yeah. If you're, it, like, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not saying it would soften the blow if your best friend saw this coming, but. It would. It would, but not by much. Yeah, that's just a lot. That's a loaded question. I don't know, my. Okay, I think I'll we have time for, for maybe one more question. I think we should do five more. One more question. We'll do one more and see if we can do another one. All right. Because <laughs> we have a lot more, but it's fine. Sorry, guys. I feel like this one kind of already plays into something that we said. Like, it kind of, like, goes hand in hand, but okay. it's not quite on the money. Okay, which one? What to do when your ex is still in your friend group? <sighs> this one hurts my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we both yeah, have some yeah we both know how this works listen if this is you out there i feel for you because i wouldn't say he's necessarily in my friend group but also yeah he is friend group or i'd say mutual, mutual. i feel like that counts yeah 
if he's a mutual friend like yeah he's not uh, someone that you actively are seeing but it's somebody it's just someone you see all the time it's, because but it's somebody that you but you see more than than you should an ex then yeah um wait what's the question though like how do you handle it i guess it's just like what do you yeah what, what to, what's what like what's our do? advice what what's your advice um know that you don't owe them anything um see si. you don't owe them a check-in you don't owe them catching up and seeing how their life's going yeah if that's something you want to do because you're a nice, kind person, go for it. I don't think it needs to be an awkward thing of like, oh, that's my ex. I have to avoid him at all costs. If that's what you're going through at the time. Yeah. Okay. But I think you just need to be like, okay, if, this, if that's what it's going to be, um, A, find someone in, in that friend group or that mutual group that knows your situation and knows yeah. what you're going through so that like you can kind of give them the look of like hey this is getting like really overwhelming get me out of here either get me out of here or like come talk to me don't leave my side for a little bit you yeah know? that step one step two possibly think about having the like post breakup conversation of like hey we have to be friends we yeah. have to see each other yeah how are we gonna do this wasn't for me could be for you yeah it wasn't for me either no i thought about it yeah um but and one of my friends actually like said i don't think this would be a bad idea but i think the more i thought about it i was like i don't know like what I'm like, what to even There's, say? There has to be a purpose to behind yeah. it. If you're just going to talk to them to just talk, I don't think it, I don't there's think a need. No. Like, I couldn't, like, I was like, okay, well, what am I going to say? Hey, are we cool with just being friends? Well, I mean, obviously, if he's being friendly to me when we are then at, obviously you're cool then clearly friends. that's fine. So that's already checked off. There's no closure I need. Um, what's done is done. Time has passed. I don't think I need to have this, like, there's nothing that's going to, like, have, there's nothing he can say that's going to make me feel better or do yeah. anything for me, really. Um, and I was just, like, I think it would just create, for me, if I was, like, I think it would just, like, there just wasn't anything that he could bring to the table or that I could bring to the table that I think would make seeing each other like like it wouldn't do anything yeah so like I was just like well I mean when I see him I see him just got to be mentally prepared for that yeah. um that's the key too is is being mentally prepared to see him yeah if you're not mentally prepared for it then you're allowed to have your time you're allowed you're allowed to not hang out with you you're allowed to say I don't want to hang out with this person in that social just settings. sucks, though, because it it's sucks, like your friends. So but you're guarding your heart. You're guarding your heart. But here's what here's what I think. Talk to like your friend, like your close friend in the group, about boundaries. Like, yeah, hey, like I'm not gonna go over to his house, but if it, he's coming over to my house with a group of friends because that's what we have to do, like okay, but this is this is my boundaries and this is what yeah. I'm gonna need help with. If you're going out. If, you, if your friends are organizing a, a, an event and it is helpful for you to be let known when he's going to be there, yeah, that's let fair. them know that. Like, I think just communicate with your friends in the group that, like, hey, you're going through a hard time or, like, hey, you're yeah. still working on things. Communication is key. I but, do agree yeah. with you that I do think that, like, if you if he is in your friend group, then you should have one other person besides that person that you should yeah. know, obviously. And to just, like, like Bree said, like, to be able to be like, hey, listen, this is a lot for me. Or, like, just so that they're on guard. And, yeah. like, 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 it's just like a relationship, like, like a, or a breakup. Like, over time, it'll get easier. But from the jump, the first couple of times, even depending on time frame, like, my time frame when I saw my ex was, like, it was a good chunk. It was, like, we're good. But it can still bring up a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions, like, 
it, it could open up old wounds, but yeah. like that's why you need to like talk to people and take a step back and be like, hey, is this something I can mentally handle again? Like, or do I need some time and then go from there? Yep. That's Valid. what I said. Good. That was good. It's a good one. I think that might have to be our last question. Oh. Uh. Yeah, that has to be our last question. Mm, yes. So. Yes. <gasps> oh, yes. All right. Do you want to go first or would you like me to go first again? You go first. I'm going to go first. Um, let's talk about Starbucks. Starbuckses are not spread out proportionately. I don't know how many of my listeners are from Morgan Hill, probably just my family. But let me give you, when you come home, you will see this. Mm -hmm. Morgan Hill is a small town. It's a small town, okay? There are, let me count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's nine Starbuckses in Morgan Hill. Here's my house. Here's my school. On the way to school, there are four Starbuckses. There's got to be more in Glendora. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think there's that. There's probably like, there's probably around the same amount in Glendora. There's probably like eight or nine Starbuckses. But Glendora is much larger than Morgan Hill. That's fair. So... I just don't understand why they're not spread out proportionately because like in a big city like Los Angeles or San Francisco, they're harder to find because they're not, there's not as many. That's I mean, there true. are, but proportionately not. You can't find one on every corner. That's fair. That's a good one. Thank you. I think, I don't, I don't understand why people hate on Crocs so much. I think that's oh mine. Yeah. Don't say oh boy. Don't say oh I boy. I have Crocs. I have Crocs. I don't, I don't, like it's either you like them or you hate them. I don't know anybody that's like, I think they're all right. I think they're all right. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. I used to hate on my... Here, let me put it this way. I don't know anybody, like it's either you own Crocs or you don't own Crocs. That's correct. That's generally how <laughs> life works. You either got it or you don't I'm got saying, it. like, I don't think there's anybody that's like, man, I really wish I had a pair of Crocs, but I don't need them. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you either have them or you don't. There's not somebody that's like, man, you know what I want for Christmas? A pair of Crocs, but I'm not going to get a pair of Crocs. I'm just going to keep on wanting a pair of Crocs. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. So if you want a pair of Crocs, you're going to go get a pair of Crocs. Usually. I don't like... That's, I that's, that's like. a good that's a good POV. If you want Crocs, you're going to go get you some Crocs. But if you don't want Crocs, then you're like, not, not going to get, get them. them. That's fair. That's what I think. Good one. I like Crocs. That's a good one. I feel like when I'm laying down like this, I look like I'm asleep. But literally, this couch is just like, you're either laying down <laughs> or you're not on the couch at all. That's fair. Whatever. Oh, wow, guys. What a two-part series. So good. These were juicy questions. Guys, you never know when we're going to do a Q&A episode, so keep an eye out on our Instagram stories Follow because us. we may have we may have an opportunity for you to ask questions and yeah. Who better to ask these questions and have them be answered by than exactly. us? Exactly. POV W Haley and Bree, go check out our Insta. Yes. We we didn't get through all the questions, so um, stay tuned. Uh, we will be posting them on the, our Instagram stories, a couple of them, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll do a live. Just I think we should do a live. A live? I don't think anybody would tune in, but maybe. A live in Morgan Hill. And then we can have people on. A live in Morgan Hill with my parents. So they, they could ask, these, they, they can answer these questions. Parents. Oh my gosh, that would be so funny. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Okay. All right, guys. Adios. Adios.